I'm your host Nicholas Tui, and welcome to With Random Awesome People, the show about ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. Join us as they share with us their life experiences and what they went through to get to where they are right now. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Wrap. And with me, I've got a friend of mine. His name is Wong Eugene. He is a professional speaker. He's known as the coach on mental toughness. And he used to be an ex-lawyer. So welcome on board. Eugene, how's it going today? Hey, great, man. Thanks for having me on your podcast. It sounds right. exciting. All right, cool. We try. Uh, to all our 15 listeners out there. No, just kidding. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about... Um, uh, something that's I think quite quite important for everyone, whether you know it or not. We're going to talk about um, mental toughness, and uh, we know we're all a bit of in time constraints, so we're going to jump right into it. So I'm not an expert on it, but Eugene definitely is. So Eugene, what's your definition of mental toughness? Many people think mental toughness is about being tough. You know, like uh, someone from the Navy SEALs. You have this image of a guy who's out there, impenetrable, can go through any kind of challenge, never shaken. But actually, mental toughness is about this ability for you to not just bounce back from challenge, but to thrive in difficult times. And it's, it's an attitude, actually, and something that can be, can be developed uh, through skill, something that can be learned, um, and it's not something that is inherent in someone. So it's not, it's not genetic. Yep. Yeah, so you're not born with mental toughness. Would then that be a construct of the environment you're in? Or is it something that you can really, like you mentioned, you know, propel yourself and train yourself to build over time? Well, mental toughness, obviously, if you've, if you've been through a lot of challenge in your life, uh, someone who's 60 years old, who's, you know, the, the, the saying they like to have is like, I've eaten more salt than yeah. you've eaten rice, right? And it's true because if you've been through a lot of challenge in your life, um, difficulties, adversities, obviously, if you, you come up okay at the end of the whole thing, you'll have more mental toughness. Mm-hmm. And research shows that people who's, who's been through a lot of tough times, recessions and um, when those who have been let go of their jobs or downturns and stuff like that uh, usually come up stronger. But you don't have to have to go through all this challenge. You can learn yep. uh, through a certain set of skills. So that's what I do. I try to make it simple for people to understand uh, and to create strategies and te- tactics for them to be mentally strong uh, right off the bat. So what's the... So let's look at it this way. Um, what's the purpose for me to be mentally strong what's the uh, you know what why is it good for me to be mentally strong well there's there's a there are a lot of uh, ways to look at challenge and everybody face challenge i mean sooner or later no matter how smooth your road is you will face a challenge uh, and even the best businesses the best leaders the top performers all will face a downturn it's just mm-hmm. a matter of when yep. and uh, mental toughness equips you with the um, strategies for you to not just uh, bounce back to where you are and take adva- rather take advantage of this situation to become a better version of yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you ask me what's the difference between a gold medal winner from uh, an, an Olympian gold medal winner compared to somebody who's average, it's not the skill level. Uh, most of them actually have around the same t- set of skills. They right. can run as fast, they can play the game as, as well. But it is that preparedness for them to uh, bounce back up uh, when they face a challenge. And all of them have failed before. It's a matter of how much they are willing to learn from it and become a better version of themselves. Yeah. So using that analogy, I always tell people that I know, it's you don't train four years to go to the Olympics. It's actually more than that. In that four years, you have to win a couple of divisional, regional, national, um, and of course, you know, uh, the, the local stuff, starting off from the local stuff as well. So what we're saying is that obviously not everyone who has won an Olympic doesn't mean that he or she has success- successfully won all those smaller ones and penultimately win the big one. There has to be certain points in time where they fail, right? I failed the national championships. I'm going to have to go into the regional, but then again, I bounce back and won the state one and then eventually manage to make time and go to the Olympics and win that gold medal. So are we talking, using analogies of that, 
that's something what we're looking at in terms of bouncing from failure to become better and then really achieving your objective overall in the end game. Yes, exactly. So it's that readiness for you to bounce back from challenge. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I always say that every challenge is an opportunity for us to become better. Uh, it's just a matter of your attitude, whether you look right. at that as a lesson or whether you look at it as a failure. So I always use these words. I say that it's not, uh, everything is either a celebration or a lesson. Mm-hmm. You either learn something from it or you celebrate your win. Yep. Um, either way, you will, you, you're heading towards success. But if you look at anything as a failure, then it is, uh, it is taking a step back. If mm-hmm. you look at it as a lesson, then you're taking a step forward. So I, I, I use the word uh, bounce back, not just up, but bounce forward. Is that our first lesson in mental toughness right away? <laughs> yes. Changing your mindset, not looking at failures as failure, but looking at failures as opportunities to learn, yes, to I adapt can. and be better. Yes, overall. actually, that's, that's the best opportunity to learn. And uh, with that kind of attitude, then you will, you will go out there and try different things. Um, mm-hmm. If you are an um, entrepreneur, a small businessman, then you will try different ways to market yourself. And if you and if it doesn't work, at least you know it doesn't work this way. Yeah. Um, and many people nowadays they are going on, uh, they're trying to promote uh, through social media, trying to do videos of themselves. And it, there's no harm trying because mm. there's no real formula to success. It's just a matter of trying it out. I've been in business for almost fourteen years now, yep. and uh, the number of times I fail are, are, are plentiful. Mm-hmm. And many people just look at uh, what what I have right now, but it's built over so many different failures over time. Yep. And um, they were good lessons, but I've never had that. I've never had that training to tell me that uh, to look at it and be ready for it. And when it happens, to actually um, make myself a better version of uh, of a businessman or entrepreneur. Okay, so I think I think the context of it is, I guess, this is for the listeners who are in roles where you face a lot of adversity, in roles where you have a requirement to perform at a high level of deliverables. You know, I mean, for example, you know, people who are running businesses, people who are entrepreneurs, uh, sales, side business development, you know, high pressure environments. So those are opportunities for you to be, to learn in a way, not to fail, but to learn. And what we're telling you or giving you advice on is create that ability to learn better bounce back double bounce back faster harder stronger i sound like an ad but <laughs> you know that's essentially what we're talking about it is, now, it is let's put that context in in your own uh history in terms of businesses that you run obviously you're quite successful successful now in this particular one so how does that how did it come to you um that this conversations and training on mental toughness is your thing just, just talk a bit, a bit about yourself before we go into details on how to build mental toughness. Yeah, I've, I've, when I first started, um, when I first left the corporate world, I was uh, previously a, a lawyer, as you, as you mentioned, and then I have mm-hmm. um, became an investment banker, uh, leading the, the high life, uh, being paid a lot, but, you know, stressful times. And, mm-hmm. uh, and upon having all that um, experience as well as uh, exposure to big companies and with my degrees that I've had, I thought, you know, I'll jump straight into business and it should just fly. Um, so I, I went in big, uh, put in all my savings into the first business that I ran and it actually fell really flat. It was, to- it was a total um, failure. Um, but because I was adamant about continuing to find what is the the formula i just continue on so that was actually the first point where i really actually feel uh, face real failure um <laughs> you know people say one out of 10 businesses fail uh, off the bat but uh i would say your chance of failure is more than 10 percent <laughs> it's like a very very a very very high i sorry your chance of success is more yeah. is much less than 10 percent so uh yeah i failed right there and then uh, I reinvented myself, came up with uh, the idea of um, going back to corporates and doing health programs for them. Yep. But it, it wasn't the exact way that I'm doing it right now. I, we started off with doing a lot of health screenings and um, that was a quite a fast and easy money for 
uh, just making uh, the difference between what a health screening company do and uh, marking it up for a corporate. Yep. Um, but it was not, there was no way that you're going to be big with something like that. Mm -hmm. And along the way, uh, as we do the business, I, I realized that there was a high demand for the follow-up from the health screening. And so we, we did health talks and we did workshops and stuff like that. And, um, and when I, we grew in, in that area, um, I started to realize that there is, a, there is an even stronger need. Uh, more than physical health is the mental part of things. Yep. And most people look at mental part of things as just like mental health, you know, yep. uh, avoiding depression or anxiety or suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. Yes, that's really important. But the mm. other side of things is about peak performance. How can we optimize our minds so that we can perform at our best in our jobs? And no one was really actually teaching that part. Yep. They, are, they were just focusing on avoiding mental diseases, but not uh, mental performance. Right. So I, I got really interested in that area. And then um, I went to deepen my, um, my knowledge about this whole thing. I went over to a place called the Mental Toughness Research Institute. Uh, I've learned under the International Sports Science Association a lot to mm -hmm. do with athletics, but also the mindset of any form of champion in any field. Yeah, yeah, and I adapted it, created my own syllabus, and and that's how it got started. That's fair enough. What what I hear is that from the mental health screening, sorry, mental health screening, geez, uh, the health screening days all the way down to um, right, what you're doing right now is really building the awareness of it. Right, so we talk about you know, Malaysians are famous for being unhealthy. Right, we yeah. we are the worst um, <laughs> among Asians. And I think building and the government is doing so much more in terms of for a long, long time just building awareness of how important health would be. And I think that when you triggered on that particular point and then moved on, to real, you realize that well, there's also the issue of mental health. Right, fine. I mean that's mental illness and mental diseases. But now. How do we then, when we fix that, or eventually we try to fix that and it goes to, let's say, negative to zero, then where and how do we come in to push that zero to a positive side? So this is where I think that mental toughness bit comes in, where it really alleviates the, sorry, it really escalates the need for peak performance. And I understand where you're coming from when it comes from uh, champions and, and people who are, you know, high performance athletics is a state of mind. It's consistent, sustainable, high level performance throughout that particular period. And I think most of the time it's it's a mind game rather than a physical one. Okay, that's great. That's fantastic. I think we we really appreciate what you're doing. Um let's get down and dirty to it. So you gave us your first lesson. Um it's not a failure, it's a it's an opportunity to learn. And let's say if an Irish Joe off my sales team, you know, I get a lot of rejection, I get a lot of uh crappy clients over time and it really beats me down mentally so how do i build that mental toughness is it a shield or is it really is it is it a shield or is it something that i can build from core down to adapt and be better All right i think you hit the nail on the head because you you mentioned about from being negative to zero and mm -hmm. that's about when, when we talk about negativity is when you face a challenge when you are stressed out when you're depressed um, when you have adversity and then you you bring yourself back to zero again and what about those people who are at zero and you're not performing at all like you say someone from your sales team mm -hmm. and you want them to go up to if not a 10 but at least somewhere around a seven or eight yeah right? at least you, a direction of going towards that positive side yes right if you see it's a meter going to go at least point that needle towards the right direction yes so you want to bring that up to that level where they are high performing and sustainable right so it's a lot to do with a, a whole variety of different skills and the, f the first skill is to to have that ability to compose yourself in high pressure situations mm -hmm. so meaning that you see when when there's high pressure a lot of people have tunnel vision they lose track of time they lose track of what they're saying and they, they actually totally lose um, all that knowledge and all that experience they have so you must be able to um, regulate your emotions. Yeah. If you're, you're built, able to regulate your emotions, meaning that even if it's high pressure, someone is scolding you, someone's, and you have a very short timeline, you are still able to tap on all your resources in order for you to perform. 
and that requires certain skill. It's not automatic. Certain people are good at it, uh, at regulating their emotions, yep. but some people need to be trained. Mm-hmm. And I, I teach a lot of skills to do with uh, controlling your heart rate, uh, bringing your heart, your blood pressure down, breathing in the right way, especially when it comes to these high pressure situations, and uh, the ability for you to stay calm and have the right type of talk to yourself, right. the right type of words that comes up. So all these things form a certain type of formula, mm-hmm. and if you can if you can control this generally within yourself, you have so much more ability to tap into your real resources and optimize your performance. Right. So you're saying that we already know what we have to do. We already know what we have to say when we are placed in a high pressure environment to respond, react or adapt. It's just that this particular tunnel vision of sorts blocks that from us. So we, if we can have the ability to sort of erase that or minimize that, then our skills expertise that we have in, in, in ourselves comes into play. Then mm. we know what to do, yep. right? Okay, so what are certain things that we can do um, when we get locked into this tunnel vision? How do we then get out of this particular tunnel vision part of things? So the first thing is to recognize what physiological symptoms locks you into this tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. For example, if you're, if you're not breathing, that's the simplest one. A lot of times when we are stressed up or when we are in high pressure, we are not even taking in the oxygen that comes into our body. So we hold our breath. Yeah, we hold our breath or it's very shallow. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you actually have to actively or purposely breathe deep, deeply in. And when we, and I teach a lot, I, I've done a lot of research on breathing itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do meditation myself and I've learned from a lot of these yogis and um, sports therapists and breathing is one of the simplest easiest way uh, to regulate your uh, feelings and many people just overlook how simple it is but uh, how effective it can be yeah. and um, as simple as taking deep breaths in and uh, I, I teach this um, count which is called the 4-5 system right. taking deep breaths in through our nose f- in 4 seconds mm-hmm. taking a short pause at the end and then breathing out 5 seconds through our mouth right. and that gives you the ability to have a pause, have a short break from your difficulty, and I'll just say maybe do that 10 times. Mm-hmm. And if you done that 10 times, it takes you maybe two minutes, uh, and you have a lot more clarity in your uh, ability to think. Right. So that's, that's just one of the simple ways. Does that also take away, say you're so engrossed with that situation right now, and then you take your mind off that situation and focus on your breathing, 10 times, five in, oh, sorry, four in, five out. Yeah. That's, that's a good, you know, one minute or so of not being focused on the problem. So yes. that gives you clarity. It sort of brings you away from that tunnel vision part of it. Yes. Would that be correct to assume as well? Yes. And it's a side, I mean, there's a side thing to, to looking at a breathing exercise. Right. And, and following up exactly from what you've said there mm-hmm. uh, is the ability to know how, what to focus on at any one particular time. You know, it's rather impossible for us to focus on every single um, stimulus that comes into our through our way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if that happens today, you look at everything and you take in everything in your head will explode. Yeah. So you you must know what to choose to focus on, and that's that's a skill in itself. I would say the um, to say to filter what is what are the right things to think about right now mm-hmm. in order to make the right decision and to um, to push away certain types of thoughts most of the time for most people just the automatic negative thoughts just flood their mind and they think of the worst case scenario they think of the most terrible outcome for something but Mm -hmm. the truth is you should be focusing on what you can do right now at the present moment rather than what happens when you do all these things and you fail so do you then ultimately go into a problem solving mode or do you think about what's my end objective which I want to achieve? I mean, give us an example of what kind of thought process should we jump into to help alleviate um, our stress points. Okay, so you, you imagine that you're a firefighter. Mm-hmm. You're going into a building that is filled with fire, right? An average person, when they go in there, they don't, they're stuck. They don't know what to do. So they, they, once they panic, they get stricken. Some people just stand there and, and, and just cry. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's the same. Uh, but a firefighter will know how to say, "Okay, these are the 
what are the steps I need to take now? One, two, three, four, five. And the ability for them to also say, um, irrespective of whether um, I come out of this alive, these are the things I need to do. Mm-hmm. So I don't think about the outcome. I think of the processes that I need to do. Yep. So I would say a, a good way to look at things is to they have that ability for you to focus on processes rather than outcomes. Um, because outcomes, there are a million outcomes that, that can happen at, mm-hmm. at any one time. So that's thinking about the future. You want to be very present-minded. Yep. So know what you can do right now and focus on just that. It's the same for sports. It's the same for business is the same for a presentation is the same for closing a sale it's mm-hmm. all what you can do at that moment so it's one foot in front of the other metaphorically speaking and understand and trust the process in a way it's because you've obviously 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 a firefighter has taken countless hours in practicing their drills and doing stuff that they need to do so they trust the process to generate that final outcome for them which is successful in the end yes all right but it's also a firefighter would already have prepared himself mm-hmm. much earlier on. And this, this is goes to, without saying that you need to have that skill. It doesn't yeah. mean that if you have this ability for you to regulate your emotions, you don't have to have the skill. Of course. Like, like for example, if you're going to do a presentation uh, in front of uh, a group of people or maybe to the investors, you will need to know your stuff. Yeah. So keeping calm and knowing nothing is just as bad as <laughs> exactly. getting excited and still knowing nothing. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we're, so not, to, we're not talking about not knowing your stuff. You need to know your stuff. Yes. We're talking about maybe on high pressure, you're not mentally tough enough, but you need to know, you need to block, clear that blockade yes. so you actually know your stuff. Yes. Right. And that also leads to, I would say, uh, another point that uh, I want to put forward sure. for uh, to get more mentally tough and it's actually preparedness. Mm-hmm. And you see all the people who actually perform at their peaks uh, all have preparation, which means that Preparation increases your confidence and confidence is an element of mental toughness. Mm -hmm. So with a higher confidence level, you are more prepared for challenge and more prepared for um, any kind of difficulty within the the thing that you're doing. So um, confidence level is something that needs to be developed. Uh, is of course it's preparedness, but it's also that idea of self-esteem, right. um, the way you look at uh, your own abilities, the way you think that you have potential. All these uh, forms, uh, forms. These all these are elements within the mental toughness sphere. Yeah. So, so you start off with composure. Now we're talking about confidence. And how do we build confidence? Is there any? Um, you know, you 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 mentioned. I'll say repetition, practice, knowing your thing, knowing your stuff um, is beneficial in, in it all to actually build confidence and so you can actually deliver it. So I see it as how you package it. It's a process by itself, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you talk about change of mind, the composure, and confidence, and the deliverables for it. So how can an uh, average person, what can they do on a day-to-day basis to build confidence? Well, I, I like to use the word nudge. Mm-hmm. And nudge basically means that you have to push yourself slightly out of that comfort zone uh, in order for you to grow, but not so far that you feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Because if you, if you push yourself um, so far, like leaps, if I say leap and you know, go really deep into something and you feel this and when you fail, you feel this huge pain. And when, when you associate pain with doing something, you don't want to do it again. Yeah. Right, so um, the idea is you nudge yourself a little bit, and even if you fail, at least you can say, "Huh, okay, uh, that was a little bit painful, but you know, I can take it, yeah. and I want to nudge myself in another direction right now." And each time you nudge, each time you push yourself and exper- ex- experience more, uh, there is growth, mm-hmm. and you start to realize that actually you um, this little what I call situational confidence um, will then slowly build what I call your global confidence. Yeah. And that little bit, like for example, maybe you didn't think uh, you could run a 10 kilometer run and then you start off with three and then you go five mm-hmm. and then suddenly you're just, you're already doing 10. It's mm-hmm. actually not that difficult to, to do 10 kilometer run if you actually nudge yourself. But if I ask you from, from zero to run a 10 kilometer run tomorrow, you, you suffer like crazy. Yeah. You might get a cramp, yeah. right? Uh, I've just met one of my 
one of my clients who's uh, who's a HR head of a, of a company, and he told me that he couldn't run one kilometer at the beginning, but with this idea of nudging uh, bit by bit, and he was 125 kilos at that time, with the idea of nudging bit by bit uh, over a number of years, he's now running ultra marathons. Right. So it's just, it's that ability to push yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. And for those people who, run who never run a marathon and suddenly went and run 10 kilometers i think that's bullshit because you know, you've been nudging yourself with other means as well probably you can swim like <laughs> five kilometers already yes so i mean there are rare instances of individuals who can do that yeah. um and that to me when i do see it they, they are they normally have very strong mental fortitude they, mm. they do things which are very extreme they keep calm situations and i think that's the end goal isn't it to be in a situation where you know you can do certain things maybe without practice or prior uh, preparation before and be successful enough for it. Or if you're not, then you have the amount of mental toughness to bounce back even better from it. Yes. So, okay, the awareness itself has to be built. Yes. So we talk about composure, we talk about confidence. Now, is there, you also talk about practice, i.e. I. practice makes perfect. Is there anything that I can do as a, as a average Joe to boost my own confidence when say I'm going for a presentation or a speech or you know anything that requires high level performance. Yes, I, actually there is one, and it's it's very important to develop it. Actually, not just for high performance, but basically for anybody who who is working a job, who's doing a business, who's who's running any form of um, entrepreneurship. Um, it is the concept of self talk. Mm-hmm. What do you say to yourself on a constant basis? Now, most people are not even aware of the constant, incessant self-talk that's happening uh, with themselves. Yeah. Um, but everybody, um, even myself, we have this, self, this little Eugene standing on, our, on the shoulders. You can imagine mm-hmm. one devil and one angel. And the devil's always telling you, you know, take the easy way out. Mm-hmm. Um, this is too hard for you. Why are you doing this? And the angel is always telling you, uh, no, you can do it. You, you should step up to, uh, and become better. So which one do you choose to listen to? Most of the people will go for the easier one because it feels that there is no sense of discomfort. There's no pain right yeah. there. But there, on the other side, there's growth. So you must constantly look out for that uh, negative devil coming to you and telling you that you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it this is too tough. And you need to consciously switch your uh, self-talk to something that's more positive. And it requires a certain set of skills because first of all, people are not even conscious of it. Yeah. Then after you're conscious of it, you need to switch it. And then when you switch it, you must also know what are the Q words. I use the word Q words mm-hmm. because certain words mean a lot to people. Certain words mean not so much. Like if let's say I said, uh, Nick, chill. Right? And to you, chill might be just saying, you know, hit back, uh, drink a beer, relax somewhere. Yeah. But chill might also be, okay, take a breather, uh, compose yourself and start performing again. Mm-hmm. So it, re- it really depends. And those keywords are actually what people use in athletics. Uh, and they train in, a, in the mind of the uh, athlete uh, to anchor these certain keywords to certain types of steps. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to tell you, this is the steps, one, two, three, four, five. And when I say this word, I say, chill. Then he's like, okay, it's time to take a step back. It's time to reprogram what's the strategy and then move forward again. Right. All so right. there are certain, there's a sort of a trigger, trigger mechanism that you reset when you need to know and go back to your, um, I say go back to your protocol, right? I yep. want it to sound machine uh, I don't want it to sound to be more machine-like, but you know, go back to your step-by-step process, right? Okay, this is what I do, this is what I do. Okay, great. All right, cool, interesting. Um, then how do we prepare those steps? If we say chill to me and I haven't done, and we haven't talked about those steps yet, then I'm like, what's going on, right? Mm. So how, do, how does one person prepare those steps? So when I use that trigger or that keywords, it puts me in that point zero and then I start moving up to point 10 again. Yes. So first of all, you need to identify, uh, th- that's what I do as a coach. I identify what is the performance routine. What's, what's the high performance routine? Mm-hmm. So it's different for different people. Some people it's just, you know, I need to do a presentation to investors. Some people it's like, I need to close a sale. Some people it's just as simple as like, I need to talk to my boss. 
Mm-hmm. So it, it's it. You need to identify that performance situation first, and then we break down that performance situation. What are the steps you need to do? So for first of all, you need to prepare these slides. Second thing, you need to present it this way. Third of all, you must uh, be able to answer this type of questions, right? Yeah. So we break this down, and then we do something called a pre-performance routine. And a pre-performance routine basically means that um, what do you do before? Uh, performing this particular set that actually gets you into the mindset that you are ready for these few things. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, if let's say I'm an athlete, I'm at the back room, I'm doing warm up or stretching, right? So for you, it might be like, okay, I'm going to just remember these few words that I need to say and make sure that I say it before going into this presentation. Yeah. Or it might be like, I need to just take a couple of deep breaths to get my heart rate down so that when I go in, I have a very clear view of what to do. Uh, what to attract or what to achieve within this point. So th- that pre-performance routine as well as that performance routine, it's very important. Now it, it's, it's easy to say, but yeah. it takes time for you to break it down. And once you've broken it down, it actually is, it, you will remember it automatically. It's, it comes to you very easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is most people don't break it down. And most people actually, the first time they do the, High pressure situation is actually like they 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 want to do a speech and they say I'm prepared, but they never they they prepared everything in their head. Right. They haven't even written it down. They never even said it out. Mm-hmm. So that's that's not the way to prepare it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess we are not in this conversation to teach you how to do speeches better or presentations better or sales better. I think we're here to do that pre warm up prelude to it how to put yourself in a mindset so you can execute what you need to execute better. Yes. There are yes. other, there are other uh, subject matter experts in terms of what you want to execute, whether exactly. it's running exactly. 100 meters or you know, doing a dance or doing a speech or whatever it is. But we're here to actually talk about that mindset that you want to go through to prepare yourself to be as good as you can be when you execute the thing that you want to do. Yes, exactly. So I'll, I'll just give you a quick example of how I do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's different for different situations, but I'll give you the example of a big keynote that I'm doing. Let's say I'm doing it um, to 5,000, 6,000 people. I've recently just done one for 6,000 uh, insurance agents. Yeah. So I have a very set uh, sequence, and my sequence I know takes about roughly 30 minutes to do. Mm. So 30 minutes before I go up on stage, I want everybody to clear uh, the holding room where I'm sitting in and I don't want anybody around me. And I start off with something quite funny, which is actually doing workouts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I prefer to, to get my heart rate up when I am talking. So I'll, get, I'll do some push-ups, I'll do some jumping jacks, I'll do some shadow boxing just mm-hmm. to get the heart rate up. And I, I, I even know what is the best heart rate that I'm supposed to be at. So I, it cannot be too high until I'm panting. <sighs> yeah. Like that's when I'm talking, but it shouldn't be like, I'm so relaxed and hello everyone. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. It should be like, hello everyone. Yeah. So it's, it's somewhere between uh, 100 to 110 beats per minute. And once I've done that, uh, I'm going to go through the first, at least the first minute of what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. The first minute of what I'm going to say. So these are the f- exact steps of how I'm going to walk in. These are the first minute, the, the first few words I'm going to say. Usually if I get the first sentence right, uh, I will get the whole flow correct. Yep. And Because um, that itself is your cue yes. to go into. Okay. And then the last part of it, I'll just listen to music. And um, I, you've, you've uh, enjoyed music a lot. Um, my brother is a music producer. Yeah. So we, I've, I've also learned music for many years. And uh, I use music. I have a certain set list. And this is a, a Spotify set list, mm-hmm. which, uh, which gets me into this state. So it's that state where it's like, I, I prefer rock uh, and, and heavy metal, and, uh, but not too aggressive type. Yeah. So I choose this set of songs and I play them. And as long as I'm not up there, I'm still listening to this piece. Mm-hmm. So it gets me into this state where it's like elevated. I'm like almost going into battle, like going to run uh, the race of my life, kind of feeling excited um, and without thinking too much about other things because the yeah. song keeps me there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an example of how far I go for a routine. Okay. But it doesn't have to be so 
um, so deep for many yeah. people. Well, I mean, let's put it this way, right? Let's let's. Uh, I think for those who are mentally tough, or at least a level of that, they can they can operate effectively what they do. And what I feel, based on experience and conversation, is that that routine doesn't necessarily have to start the minutes before. It could start the day before, right? You're doing a bit here, a bit there. But I think what's critical is that you are aware of what you have to go through to put yourself in that mind frame. Um, and it's not about duration of the routine. It's about completeness of the routine. So if you, say, start listening to music, I, I could work differently, right? The day before a big presentation, I could be going through it in my mind. I could be listening to, my, to music, um, the day before in terms of putting myself in the same mental state, telling myself that this is the mental state that I want to be at. So when I go on a day itself, I don't have to listen to music. I just say, hey, remember the time we listened to that music? Okay, I'm in that state already. Yes. So all this might sign, sound a bit vague, but I think the critical bit is that you you have awareness of what you have to go through to put yourself in that state Yes. that you can perform in at the peak level that you want to perform at. Yes. I think that's even more critical than... Um, well, obviously you still have to perform like you mentioned earlier, but I think that's even more critical than just knowing the stats, but knowing what gets you there. Yes, and okay. it's it's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Some some people can just get there very quickly. Yeah, and all they have to do is like just say a th- an affirmation three times, mm-hmm. like you know, uh, I'm strong, I'll be great, and I'll perform or something like that. Yeah, and um, and they get into that state. Is that does that mean? But it's not. But it's by no means easier, right? Because what they've done, correct me if I'm wrong. What they've done is they've condensed it into three words. Yes. But the homework they did to queue up, if you break it down, it could be a subsection A, B, C. You know, a bunch of things they did to summarize it into those three words. It, it means that they were long prepared before they said those three words. Definitely, and, definitely. Right. It's a lot more homework, and mm-hmm. that's why you know in. In high-performing situations, uh, whether it's in sports or whether it's a stage performer, they all have all these um, managers or psychologists that's uh, helping them to get into that state each mm-hmm. time. And we're not talking about one night or you know one one race. We're yeah. talking about multiple races, multiple performances throughout the year, and mm-hmm. each time giving excellence. So that's. That's another area of mental toughness. So that's why you you rightfully said it's mental toughness for peak performance. You're not talking about mental toughness to overcome challenge. Yeah. So mon- mental toughness has many applications, and uh, in business, and I think for listeners out there who are who are interested in in this particular topic, most of them will be talking about peak performance. Yeah. Uh, I I'm here and I'm doing okay, but how can I be better? Mm -hmm. And the idea of being better is just being excellent in every single little thing you do. It's not just high-performing situations, but it's also that chat with your loved ones. It's also that um, workout you're going to do this evening. Every single one should be the best. Mm -hmm. And if you just give your best, there is no way that the universe is going to tell, going to give you something bad. You're just going to improve. And you know the universe is going to say, um, "You deserve greatness." Yeah, because you earned it. Yeah, and because, because you, you earned it, it. as you can. And actually, I've just been reading this book <laughs> right, yeah. right before we came, and I was just going through the uh, uh, in front of me is the secret from by Rhonda Byrne, and just going through some of the the old concepts are on, and I'm putting it into a program mm-hmm. um, about gratitude. Just knowing that. Uh, you already have enough will actually attract more of this goodness into your life. Yeah. Okay. Now, so we talk about confidence, composure, have the ability to build that uh, preset mindset before you go and perform and the level that you want to perform. You also mentioned that you did, uh, you do shadow boxing, push-ups, etc. Now, my question to you is that it's it's physical capabilities. Um, you know, if I'm fitter, does it make me does it make me mentally tougher? Or is it vice versa? Well, it's both ways for sure and then mm-hmm. scientifically proven as well. Um, for the physical part, actually there were neuroscientists in the New York University who um, has proven in research that being phys- doing exercise actually is the best thing, the single best thing you can do for your mind mm-hmm. and uh, in terms of a few things. So the immediate effects will be the ability to focus, the ability to recall things 
and um, the ability to just reason things out. And all this happens because there's more uh, blood flow to the mind and there's more connections between the neurons. Mm -hmm. um, but long term, there's also an effect. And the long term will be um, the ability for the brain cells to actually regenerate and to avoid long term diseases like memory lapse yeah. um, and all the old age mental problems. So, uh, and many people thought when we were when we are older, our our brain size is fixed. But uh, I think there's most people know right now there's uh, the eye concept of neuroplasticity mm -hmm. uh, and um, it means that the ability for brain cells to continue to grow even when you're adult. Um, and the best, one of the best ways to, to grow that is to have a combination of uh, physical as well as mental exercise. Yeah. So when I talk about physical exercise, it's a standard gym workout mm -hmm. or the runs uh, sports that you do. But it's in combination with uh, mental exercises like meditation or mental focus or... Um, doing a particular uh, concentrating on something for a long period of time yeah so if you're able to do this combination then your mind will continue to grow talk about concentrating on something for a long period of time um i know that is a rarity right now only because maybe because only you have a deadline that's where you can concentrate on desperation but let's say you have no deadline you are free to do whatever you do i know that some people find it hard to concentrate to do their tasks for three four hours in a row so how do we build a bit on that to, to help us out? The first, first thing you have to notice is when you are not concentrating. Actually, mm -hmm. the times that you're not concentrating. Because most people don't even realize that they're not concentrating on something. So uh, we have so many distractions nowadays, our phones and WhatsApp and uh, emails and stuff like that. Um, and many times when, when we're doing a tough job, you will find ourselves breaking off from that tough job just to, just to give ourselves this little break um, to look at something. Mm -hmm. But um, instead of doing that, train yourself to say that, okay, if I'm going to just do this, I'm going to edit this particular podcast and it's going to take me an hour to do this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not be distracted for an hour, no matter how much I feel like touching my phone or checking my email, I'm not going to do it. Now, that ability for you to not give in to your desires or not give in to this uh, immediate compensation of checking your phone um, builds over time. Yep. If you continue to have that kind of discipline in terms of your actions, uh, you will have strong discipline of concentration over time. And this is very lacking today, especially in the youth. Yep. And, and we're uh, talking about nudging. You're just, it's basically saying nudging, right? And yes. I'm like, okay, if I nudge, I'm not going to check my phone for five minutes. Yep. All right, five minutes has passed. Let's try for 10. Now just focus on this. Next thing you know, I don't really care. I'm doing the job that I want to do yes. over a long period of time. Okay, but and again, I have to be aware of you what it is. You have to be aware. Yeah. One trick I can give, um, which I give students, my students, is to have a countdown timer. So mm -hmm. let's just say you're going to set this for 45 minutes. I'm going to just do this for 45 minutes. I set a countdown timer on my phone and it's going backwards from 45. Mm -hmm. It's not upwards to 45. Because if it's going down backwards, if I look at it and say, okay, I've got 20 more minutes to do, yeah. to do this. It's not as much as 45 minutes, it's 20 more minutes. I will continue doing it. Mm -hmm. But if you, the thing, the number keeps going up, you have to subtract from 45. Like, okay, now it's, 30, then 45 minus 30 is 15. I've got 15 minutes more. The number here looks and big. It seems so long. It seems so long. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just go backwards and maybe start, like you say, easy, five minutes, then 10 minutes, then 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and then 45 minutes and so on. Yeah. And, and I think I understand what you're saying as well. I mean, it's all about building awareness. It's all about, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm air quoting this, tricking your mind to be on that positive scale mm. and also knowing that physiologically it's tied into the things that can create a success for you like when you mentioned when you mentioned running on the spot or doing calisthenics in the morning like you know most Japanese companies do it's not really for them to keep healthy but it's for them to really focus on what they want to do later right mm. so it's a bit of a trick that that we sort of uh, do on a day to day as well yep okay interesting now um Obviously, we don't want to give every single thing away, right? So Eugene, so I know Eugene is a professional speaker. Um, he has opportunities to share this with you if you definitely want to link up with him. And any last words for 
we 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 call it a day like any last um advice you want to give for someone to get sustained and build mental toughness or peak performance okay so those who have listened all the way till this point all from 15 <laughs> down to five no, okay. <laughs> um you will be rewarded with this and this is basically the formula which actually give out in my programs and it's a, it's a simple way to think and it's an acronym that stands uh, that is ROCK mm-hmm. R-O-C-K and uh, we've actually covered most of the bases there and the R stands for resilience and that's the ability for you to bounce back from challenge and uh, for you to be composed uh, even though times are difficult uh, for you to um have that mindset that every single challenge is a lesson um, that's resilience and O stands for optimize mm-hmm. and the optimization comes from optimizing both your physical body as well as your mind because there's a connection there and um, as long as you continuously optimize your physical body but at the same time also do mental exercises that trains your mind mm-hmm. in terms of concentration in terms of the ability to uh, withstand uh, difficulty, you you will be there. Uh, C stands for confidence, and we've talked about confidence, the yep. whole variety of ways to build your confidence, and we talk about the concept of nudging mm-hmm. and pushing ourselves. And K stands for knowledge, and um, to actually have that attitude um, to continuously learn. And those yep. of those people who are listening to right now, yep. you probably have stand a long period of time just to learn this formula and it's great because you already have a you're already better than 99 percent of the people out there because most people just want small chunks of information and they don't Mm. deep dive into something they don't listen for 45 minutes to a podcast they want a one minute video that tells them everything Uh, they condense a 300 page book to a uh, 20 second video so it's it's not possible Mm. you have to spend time to get yourself better and uh, I'm an avid, um, I'm still an avid uh, follower of books, uh, printed books. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I use a lot of the um, electronic books now, but I still buy a lot of these printed books because of the mere fact that we actually can dwell on the same page for a long period of time and turn back those pages. Yep. And that's how you actually go deep into something. Yep. We have to dive deep. And the more we read, we ha- you will start to understand is, uh, that we we actually know so little in this world. Yeah. You have to, I guess it's the white space, you know, if you, you know, if you're aware of what you are not aware of, then you start improving yourself. Then you start building that knowledge frontier. Yes. Awesome. So Eugene, thank you again for your time. Very, very much appreciate it. And I think that if anyone who's anyone who's interested in building themselves in terms of mind and body, definitely would want to hear what we have to say. So thank you, Eugene, for your time. Really appreciate it. And then, Definitely, it's going to be a part two. If um, if you are interested in what Eugene has to offer, um, there's he has a website that would be yes, and it's uh, mentaltoughnessexpert.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. And actually, when you go to the website, there you'll automatically be prompted to um, download a guide, which is free. Um, Ten steps to be mentally tough straight away. Yeah, that's it. That's like a first free thing that you get by just going to a site. And <laughs> obviously, we're going to put this on LinkedIn. Well, I'll link him up as well on LinkedIn and all the social media. So if you want to drop him a DM in terms of learning what you can do for yourself or your organization or your business in terms of building mental toughness, feel free to reach out. Yes, and I feel that every single person out there, um, no matter how strong you think you are uh, or you, st- you think your team would be, mm-hmm. um, there, there is room for, for improvement. And yeah. uh, that's, that's what I'm passionate about, to go out there to help these people who are seeking answers to be uh, champions, to be winners in their fields, uh, to become mentally tougher. Yeah, awesome. All right, thank you, Jingy, for your time. And thank you, everyone, for listening in. We'll be back in the next episode. Take care. It's a pleasure. Bye. If you'd like to find out more about the show and listen to other episodes, you can subscribe to us on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, or whichever platform you use. Do leave us a comment, feedback, or rating. That will help us out a lot. Our Instagram handle is at with random awesome people. If you could tell a friend about the show or share it on social media, every little bit helps. Thank you again for your time, and we'll see you on the next episode.